How's it going, Rogues Gallery, and welcome to another Flesh and Blood video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today, I'm doing a video that is probably one of the more requested videos on the channel. We are doing a Flesh and Blood collection update kind of thing. I've done videos like this before, and so I figured this actually might be fun to do every few Flesh and Blood sets to show you how my collection is progressing from someone who's you know been playing the game since the start. And that's something I want to emphasize here. This isn't like a flex, you know, it's not showing off like, oh, here's all my cool cold foils or, you know, anything like that. Though that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be showing off the cold foils. But keep in mind that I got every single one of these cards for the most part when the game was like when the cards were new, right? So for example, Tales of Aria is the current set and you guessed it, I have all of the Tales of Aria legendaries. Well, I'm missing um, Heart of Ice. So, this one, one, one interesting thing, I'm actually missing four cards. There's only four cards I'm missing in the entire game. Three of them are Fabled and one of them is Heart of Ice. So we're gonna, we're gonna show those off today, talk about which ones I'm missing and maybe how I plan to get them, which versions I plan to get. Um, most of the stuff I get through trade, right? So I get Flesh and Blood product, open it all up, and then I'll trade extras for the things that I'm missing. So I'm actually gonna have some stories here on how I got some of these cards, how I got my like full set of Alpha Enlightened Strikes, how I got my, you know, Alpha uh, Fiendel Spring Tunic, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna share with you a ton of stories. I'm also gonna show you every single deck that I own, and I think I have like nine decks um, I'm going to show you how I store my cold foil cards, especially the really expensive ones. Um, it's going to include how to store those big, you know, like snap fit magnetic cases. Because I know a lot of people have trouble storing those magnetic cases. Well, I have a product for you that is actually fantastic for that. It was actually given to me by a friend and I'll tell you a little bit about that story too. As well as just kind of like my binders and, and general collection here. So. Today, it's all about flesh and blood and collecting, though, once again, most of my stuff, a good chunk of, like, my Enlightened Strikes, for example, they're all in decks, so I'm going to show you the decks, um, because I consider myself a player first and foremost, and a lot of these things, including some um, some fables, are actually just in decks, so, yeah, this is going to be fun. Um, at the end of the video, I think I will show off my um, playmats that I have. I don't technically collect playmats. Um, I don't go out of my way to try to get them, but I've just accumulated like 25 or 30 or something playmats just, you know, by playing the game for this long. And that's honestly, like I said, how I've gotten most of these cards, right? It's how I've gotten, you know, a nice magic collection too. Just once, if you've been around and been active for a certain amount of time, you just end up with a lot of cool stuff, especially if you have good taste in things and you're like, ooh, th this is cool. I want to get these. So yeah. That's what we're going to do today. That's what we're going to do today. Um, I'm not going to show off any of these ones back here, but there might be some little hints back here at, at future videos to come. Also, do you know why these cards are here or what, what cards these are? I think longtime viewers of the channel will know, but I'm very curious to know your opinions. I also want to know your opinions on, you know, how I store this stuff and what, what you do, because I find that very interesting. Um, some of it I struggle, <laughs> I struggle with, I'll be honest. I struggle with some of it. Because you'll see some cards that are just like piles, unsorted piles of things. So yeah, yeah, this is gonna be fun. Let's do it. All right, kicking it off immediately with a very spicy playmat. This is actually a recent acquisition of mine. I actually got this at the Dallas Fort Worth Calling event um, from Tan and Grace. So yeah, this is a fantastic uh, judge mat, by the way. You, you can only get this by being a judge or having someone give it to you or trade for it or something like that. So yeah, I really like this and I uh, promised that this would see a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of screen time. So here we are. So I think let's just start showing off some decks. So this one is my prism deck and we're just going to show the spicy stuff here. This is where two of my command and conquers are and a, a foil prism, a foil luminaris, you know, and then, you know, a bunch of a bunch of angel-y stuff, and this is this is how fast we're gonna go because we have a lot of stuff to get through. So that is one of my nine decks. Here is another deck with more Command and Conquers. These are unlimited, by the way. So so are the other ones, as well as an unlimited E Strike and two First Edition Art of Wars. And this is not the last we will see of First Edition Art of Wars. I actually have a lot of these. This is actually a Chain Blitz deck that, as you can see, I've taken some cards out of, um, namely Enlightened Strike. And I believe one other, oh, no, no, um, 
maybe Eclipse. But the rest of this deck is just kind of like standard chain stuff. You can tell that I, it's been a while since I've updated this, but it does have some nice uh, Monarch stuff like Shadow Puppetry. So that's uh, two more, two more Command and Conquers and another Enlightened Strike and some Art of Wars. Uh, those are the three cards that you're going to see a lot of right here. Next up we have, hey look, more Enlightened Strikes. So we have three more Unlimited Enlightened Strikes. So this is the Azalea deck I played in the Battle for Aria. And it has this Altar Azalea, which is really, really nice. Extended Border Altar and then, you know, little little Skull. I have taken a good number of cards out of this for my Lexi deck. You know, we have some like Foil Null Room, Foil Token. We have an Alpha or First Edition Red in the Ledger and some Foils. And, you know, we have some Exude Confidences, Coax of Commotion. Pink Pitch Snatch. We have a lot of Alpha stuff in here. I like playing with my Alpha cards. We have stuff like Lunging Press, a Foil Alpha Scar for a Scar that I think is worth a, worth a couple bucks. I'll be honest right now. Ooh, these uh, Lunging Presses are really nice. The Foil Lunging Presses. If I can show that they're Foil. I actually don't know the value of a lot of this stuff. And frankly, I kind of just don't care. These are cards that I love and that I play with, and I have no intention of selling or getting rid of, and that's why I consider myself a collector and player, player first, um, not an investor, because I literally don't ever buy anything with the intent of selling. I don't even know the value. I don't even, how much is a, a Command & Conquer worth these days? 60 bucks, 90 bucks? I, do, I don't know. I actually don't know. Hey, speaking of Command & Conquers, you wanna see a spicy one? Uh, this is my uh, Classic Instructed Dash deck. This is a complete deck. Doesn't have cards taken out like those two. Um, this is a first edition Command & Conquer, a full playset. So this is stuff that I actually opened up on the channel when Arcane Rising first came out and I was just opening up cases. I opened up all three of these on the channel. So yeah, you can go watch those. And look at this, we have some Alpha Tome of Fiendels, a full playset of Alpha Tome of Fiendel. Uh, this is a card that I actually bought right before the spikes happened. So. Um, I was talking to a good buddy of mine, um, Travis from Fab Foundry and Discs and Dice, and there was just a handful of cards that I wanted to get first edition copies of because I knew that I would want them as a player because, you know, as a player who's also played Magic, there's just some alpha cards that I wish I had that I'm, they're way out of my price. So when I had the opportunity, I picked up a full play set of these. I think I had only opened up like one of these in a booster. So yeah, so this, this deck has um, first edition Command and Conquers, which are probably worth a little bit, and some first edition Tome of Fandals, which are also probably worth a little bit. And then uh, the rest of the deck is a, a boosty dash deck. There's some other like nice stuff in here, like some you know first edition Tech Low Cores. Like I said, I play, I play, oh, this is a, a Unlimited. I play with my first edition cards. So a lot of collectors and investors out there are probably gonna cringe from that, but you know what? I do. Here's a Spark of Genius. There's a high octane. I actually gave a, a good friend of mine a um, alpha or first edition high octane. Here, here's a first edition high octane. Um, just as a little gift for being a uh, for being a good friend. Uh, maybe I'll talk a little bit about that later. He's uh, someone you will know. Someone you would know. Um, also have like this foil Goliath gauntlet, a Visitronic model, uh, just a non foil. Here's some pink pitch unmovables. Um, some sink belows, including oh no, these are all. Uh, these are all foil, but they're all um, unlimited. But yeah, I, I like playing with I like playing with nice cards. I like playing with the nice cards. That's why I have them. Um, this one is my wizard deck. Um, it's complete. I've only taken out two cards, and they were Tome of Fiendals to put in my Lexi deck, actually. So we have Kano, we have the Metacarpus Node, first edition Blazing Ether. We have some Alpha, you know, first edition uh, energy potions. I think this entire deck is almost first edition for the most part. So we have like first edition tomes, you know, once again, just reiterating that I like to play with this kind of stuff, you know, first edition blazing and lesson in lava. And, um, that's why I buy these cards. <laughs> that's why I have them to play with them. Let's go on this side. This one is a pretty, pretty nice one. This one is my, um, Dorinthia deck. So this is a deck that I actually used to teach a lot of people how to play. So we have like a Courage of Blade Hold, you know, first edition Glint the Quicksilver, all of the cards that are pink pitch that, you know, that can be. So like Warrior's Valor, we have some Twinning Blades. Nothing super spicy in here, though I do like the foil first edition uh, Springboard Somersaults. But, um, and, you know, we have your pink pitch Sink Belows. I just really like this deck. I like this deck quite a bit. Um, you know, foil nourishing is really hard to tell the foil. 
a pink pitch steel blade supremacy, which is always really, really cool. And we'll show off um, more like alpha stuff because I have just binders of it. Because once again, uh, I have not bought anything since the, the boxes spiked to 200 plus. I think the last alpha box I bought was like 70, bu 70 bucks. And then we just have some other cards, including some like, you know, foil, Nolan Rune equipment and a uh, first edition, I mean, alpha foil steel blade shunt. You get them, get them with that steel blade shunt. Um, so there's that deck. Do I have more decks? Oh, I have three more decks, including my two, two most like current decks. This one is a Rhinar um, Blitz deck, actually. Um, the cards that I've taken out of this are Command and Conquer and then one other. I don't remember what the other one is. So we have a, you know, Skullhorn, Goliath Gauntlet, some Null Rune. We have a Alpha Blood Rush Bellow. Um, shout out to, you know, Ian and those who really love this card. We have um, some other ones like some Crazy Brews and, you know, Pink Pitch Barraging Beatdowns. Do I have my Alpha... Alpha Alpha Rampage? Let me see. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember if it's Alpha. Though we do have like Alpha Reckless Swing and a lot of this kind of stuff. No, it's just a, I had an Alpha... I had an Alpha Foil Alpha Rampage that I remember selling for like 15 bucks or something like that. Maybe it was more than that. Maybe it was like 30 bucks. Here we have a um, Extended Art Promo Wrecker Romp. Um, yeah, just some good, good fun stuff. Uh, let's see, I have two more decks that I want to show you, so let's do that now. This one is my current Lexi deck that I'm currently tweaking. Uh, this one, we're going to see some legendaries because I, I packed, them in, packed them in here. So this is my Lexi deck. We have good old Lexi Livewire. There's a Cold Foil Voltaire, Cold Foil New Horizon. Um, just a rainbow foil, just, just a rainbow foiled. Um, Spring Tunic, I actually bought this um, for $200 at uh, the Calling Dallas because I just needed one. And I'll show you my other one. I have a, I have a Cold Foil one. Uh, we have a Cold Foil Shock Charmers that I, I got this in a trade with DM Armada. And then we have a first edition Bullseye and a first edition Snapdragon. I do have Cold Foil versions. But the reason I'm kind of using like uh, the Rainbow Foil here and just the non-foils here is because this is a deck that I want to bring to tournaments. And there's no way in hell I'm bringing my Alpha cold foil tunic to tournaments. The rest of the deck is mostly foil. I've, I've, I've almost completely foiled this deck out. Um, there's not a ton of super spicy stuff in here, though there are some, you know, first edition three of the kinds. Uh, I do have some, oh, all, all foil lighted up. All my lighted ups are foil. All my blinks are foil. Foil remorseless. Once again, I mean, I've kind of like done the works. Cold foil, pulse of Volt Haven. I really like this deck. Really, really like this deck. Um, once again, um, just just more, more, more nice, more nice foils. And then we have like foil blizzards, foil seek and destroy for the sideboard. Um, oh, here's so here's two more Toma Fiendels. These are the ones I took out of that wizard deck. These ones, these ones are just unlimited. And we also have some some Fane Death shenanigans. So that there's that there is that deck. Um, one of my two current decks. So that's one current deck. The other current deck, and I want to give a shout out to Legendary... Oh, I forget their name. But I'll have a link to the Etsy store. Sent me this deck box for free. And um, it's really nice and really sturdy. Like, man, it snaps on really well. I'm not going to turn it upside down and shake it, but um, you can. Like, it's, it's, it's very, very sturdy. It's actually a little hard to, to take off. And so this deck... This deck is my, um, you can kind of see, I think it's called Legendary Equipment or some, something like that, but um, really, really nice deck box. So this deck is my Viscerai deck. And this is a Sonata Viscerai deck. As you can see, we have our first edition Viscerai. I do have a Cold Foil one, but I'm, once again, not bringing my Cold Foil to tournaments and I, this is a tournament deck. Um, some spicy stuff in here include first edition Mordred Tides, uh, first edition Remembrances. I think there's a foil first edition Remembrance. Um, oh, this deck has my three. Um, my th here's a first edition foil Remembrance. I think I got it in my very first booster box. Yeah, very very nice. Um, my uh, Pink Pitch E Strike. So this is a foil first edition Become the Arc Knight, uh, which is awesome. Foil first edition Gorgonian Tome. 
Here's another Easter egg. Let's go, let's go find the Easter eggs. Yeah, there, here's the three Easter eggs. I do have a story with these with these Easter eggs. I'll put those aside. Um, like when I got them. But there's some other nice cards in here that I really like, like this uh, first edition Exude Confidence. Um, not all these are worth a ton of money, I don't think, but um, they mean a lot to me because uh, I really like them. And that's, uh, that's kind of how it goes here. And then we have, uh, not all of these are foil, but a, a good chunk of these <laughs> chance are foil. And I think I have another foil one in that, uh, that chain deck. So we have a good chunk of foil rune chance. And then we have the actual equipment. So we have a reaping blade. I do have a cold foil one. I'll show that off. We have a uh, unlimited Arcanite skullcap. I do have a cold foil one. We'll talk about that a little bit later. There's a cold foil Sutcliffe suede hides, a rainbow foil blood sheath skeleton. I do have a cold foil one. We'll talk about that. Uh, Grass of the Arcanite, do have a cold foil one. We have some uh, foil null rune. This is a First edition Majestic Arknight Ascendancy, one of my favorite cards that I own. Absolutely love it. Doesn't really go that great in the deck, but love this card. You know, you got your Pink Pitch Sink Belows and your First Edition Oaths. I love this deck. Uh, one of my favorite decks that I own and one of the reasons why I keep it updated. I literally only added in those Cold Foil, <laughs> those Cold Foil Cycle Boots. Okay, so these Pink Pitch E-Strikes. I got these from, once again, Fab Foundry. Um, I bought these around the same time I bought those uh, Alpha um, Toma Fiendals, but these were the ones that I really, really wanted. I bought all three of these, I think for $200 total. And at the time, that was that, that was a little bit, that was kind, kind of a lot, it was a good deal. Um, Travis is a great dude, he gave me a good deal. But I was just like, oh, I don't know, it's a lot to spend on some cards for the channel. But I was like, I know I'm gonna regret not buying these if I don't pick them up. And uh, turns out, yes, I'm so glad I picked these up because these are cards that I really, really wanted and I just want to play with them. I love having the pink pitch versions. They're just, they're just so nice, just so nice. So these are three more E-Strikes. I think I have between all of the other decks that you saw, seven to nine E-Strikes. I don't remember off the top of my head. It's hard to keep track when they're all just in decks. And then um, for Command and Conquers, I think I have what? There's two, um, four plus the three first edition, so seven Command and Conquers. I'd like to get nine just to, so I can have three decks full, but that's, <laughs> those are the decks, okay? These are the decks. We're gonna clear this off in just a second, but let's talk about a couple other things before I show off the, the binders. All right, so. Um, this one will be really quick. These are just Tales of Aria cards that I have not put in a binder yet. Um, the cards in sleeves are all uh, foils. I have a full like place out of the Terra Sunders. So these are just like uh, majestic. So these are just majestic. Here are some of the cards from the, the starter decks that I you know really like. And then literally these are all of my extra majestics. You can see the, the major dupes on these and the cards that I've used, three freaking Voltaires. I have even, I have even more Voltaires than that. Um, yeah, so these are all, these are all the dupes of me opening like twenty something boxes of uh, of Tales of Aria, and these will end up going into a binder as well as the the foils here. I also have a big pile of unsorted majestics and other sort of things that will also go in a binder. Uh, we have this uh, prism. I actually have like two or three of these prisms. I I, I got them in like bundle deals. Um, and then just some like, you know, assorted things. A uh, little cool story about this Poison the Tips, this foil. It actually came with uh, this deck box because uh, the dude who made the deck box was super cool and he sent me a, a rainbow foil uh, Poison the Tips, the first edition one too. And then, like I said, these are just kind of like unsorted stuff from box openings and videos that I've done. Um, they've been in a big pile. Um, nothing super spicy here, but I mean, I guess some of these Crucible of War cards like this rainbow foil Skullhorn and some of the crew cards have Shot, shot up recently, um, like a foil massacre. Got a lot of sweet brute stuff. We have like a Zephyr Needle and a Kadachi. I think I have another Kadachi. Um, beautiful Halo, Herald, um, more crew stuff. Uh, I like to pull out the short print cards like the Lunging Press um, and like the Copper Tokens and that kind of stuff or the Foil Zen State and the Springboard and then all the heroes. More Foil, Lunging Press, Springboard. Some weapons. Oh, here's the other Kadachi. Um, and then um, three full sets of these Promo Herald of uh, Protection. These are um, basically mine. 
Um, Legend Story Studios sent me, I think, 60 of each of these to give away or to keep whatever I want. And I figured I will keep one playset for myself for my, you know, for my collection and to actually play with. And then all the other ones I'm giving away. And so you've seen that in the past videos and you'll see more of those in more videos because I kept a couple around for some special occasions. Uh, but these ones are mine. Uh, one, one of each set. Um, uh, each, each one of these things has three in there. And then the, the final like loose batch of cards is a, is a pretty spicy one here. Um, I was considering showing this off with the, um, with the box that I'm going to show you. And the box, I mean, it's, it's the vault. So this is just some other loose cards, but these ones deserve to go in the vault. These are, these are nice cards. So we have a Heart of Fiendal, we have a, a Shiana. Uh, this is a Heart of Fiendal that I was playing with. Uh, we have a Cold Foil Blood Sheath Skeleta. Um, two Alt Art Lake Frigids. We have a, you know, a Legendary New Horizon, Legendary Spellbound Creepers, Rampart of the Ram's Head, and Crown of Seeds. These are the rest of the um, Legendaries from Aria, other than the Heart of Ice that I mentioned that I don't have. We have a Cold Foil Pulse of uh, Candlehold, which is super nice. A Cold Foil Dusk Blade. I'll, I'll play this. I'm going to play this in Blitz and uh, Pit Fight. We have two Cold Foil Winter's Whales. Um, Mark of Lightning, Double Honing Hood. I got one of these in uh, in Dallas at like a, a sealed event. Rotten Old Buckler, Cold Foil, Cold Foil Coat of Frost, Ragamuffins, Hats. I've given away one of these and I've given away one of these and two of these. <laughs> I've opened up so many cold foils of these three cards. And then we have some promos. We have some, um, you know, these, these are ones that I, that I got at, at various calling events. So we have the, you know, Sutcliffe's Head. We have the Librarian. These are the Team Covenant promo. Um, I'll be very clear, I have a, an order uh, of 10 boxes every set for Team Covenant. So I always get 10, 10 promos. And then the uh, pre-release promos. Um, and I'm not sure where my amulet is, but I do have two of each of those. So these are other loose cards that deserve to go in the, the, the nice box. And, but we'll show that off in just one moment. Let me clear this off. All right, and here are some binders. We're gonna go over these pretty quickly. These are my Majestic binders and promo binders. And I have one other one. We'll, we'll show that one off in just a second. So um, I wanna go through these pretty quickly just to kind of, you know, um, this is a collection thing. I'm showing off my collection. These are cards that are waiting to be in decks. So we have a lot of Art of Wars. We've already seen some Art of Wars that I had, some Alpha ones. Um, I have a full, I have a ton of Art of Wars, including I have another Gorgonian Tome. Look at that, look at that Gorgonian Tome. So these are, I like to sort them by type. So these are generic ones. Um, some of them are foil, some of them are first edition. They're just kind of all randomly in here. So like um, first edition on top. And I think one of them is even a foil, a foil first edition right there. Um, we got some snags, remembrances, you know, you, you got your, your suite of nice cards. We have some Red in the Ledgers. Um, I think, yeah, this is a first edition Red, Red in the Ledger. Um, tons of rapid fires, including a bunch of first edition ones. Um, poison the Tips. I need to put that other po Poison the Tips in here. Eventually, all those cards that were in that pile, including uh, a bunch of other stuff, will we'll go into a binder. Um, look at these uh, first edition Endless Arrows. Um, more Arc Knight Ascendancies, Rattlebones, um, Ninth Blades. There's some wizard stuff, including some first edition wizard stuff. Um, I, I opened up a lot of wizard stuff, so like these Sonic Booms are first edition. Um, we have a, oh no, not a full set of Aetherizes foils, just these two. It's hard to tell the lighting here, but these two are foil. Just trust me, bro. <laughs> we have some more High Octanes, uh, Shockwave, uh, you know, just your, your mech mechanologist stuff and some extra last ditch efforts here. Uh, and then this binder is the uh, Welcome to Wraith Heroes, including some uh, promos and uh, foils. So we have like some foil tokens, we have some promos here like promo Wrecker Romp and promo Blessing of Deliverance. Um, more, more Armory promos, Sick'em Shot, Iron Song, Overloop. These are all um, just rainbow foils. So these are rainbow foil equipments that I've opened up in a lot of boxes. Um, I like to pull out the null runes and all that kind of stuff. You, you've seen all that. Um, these ones, like I said, they're all just the uh, rainbow foil. Um, I do have uh, some um, non-foil majestic equipment from, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the Crucible of War. Um, here we have some pretty nice ones, including some uh, first edition cards, though most of the first edition are in decks, though I do believe we have a Nope, none of these routes are first edition. I was gonna say, I, I know I have a, an alpha route. 
Um, we definitely have some first edition brute stuff that I don't necessarily play with all that often. Um, I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. Hmm. Maybe those are all in that, that Reinar deck. It's been a while since I've actually looked at this. Look at all this. Look at this page of crippling crushes, including where's the alpha crippling crush? We've got an alpha crippling crush that I opened up in my very first box ever. Um, including uh, an alpha foil showtime that I opened up in my first box ever. Uh, you can tell I don't have a guardian deck put together because we have a lot of nice guardian cards here. Like just tons of, you know, spinal crushes and cranial crushes. All of the things are being crushed. Same with a ninja. I don't have a ninja deck put together right now, so we have a lot of nice ninja cards here. Um, just a, uh, these are all, or these two at least are, are alpha. And uh, I do believe I, yep, I have a, a pink pitch alpha um, ancestral empowerment. I do have some foil ones too, which are which are really, really nice, really nice. Um, and then some Mugenshi releases. So those are those two binders. I also have another binder. This is the Monarch binder. I'm probably gonna do something with this binder. And by do something, I mean like, swap it up somehow. This is a Dex Protection binder, by the way. They're actually really, really nice. Um, uh, but I'm not sure. I, it's too narrow the way I have it set up. So here are some like foil adult prisms and, you know, librarian, just, just you know, you know your, your average suite of Monarch stuff. You've probably seen a lot of Monarch here. Most of the stuff are in Dex, but look, once again, I did put like some, you know, rainbow foil, aether weave here. Um, rainbow foil um, chain. I do have a full set of the rainbow foil heroes uh, from Monarch and other sets too. I'll show you those as well. Um, those ones are actually in the, the nice binder. I don't know why I put, uh, I chose to not put the, the Monarch ones in there. Maybe it's just because I have so many of them and I'm not sure why I just put these in the binder and not in the, uh, here's a uh, Bolton. I think I have two rainbow foil Boltons. These are promos that were given out in bundles that I bought or I got for buying unlimited, I think. Hmm, not sure, not sure. I don't remember, but I remember getting a lot of them. And yeah, these are just all all cards from, uh, well, from uh, Monarch, including, round it all off, Rainbow Foil Levia, very nice. Um, I don't have a full set of Cold Foil Commons, though I do have a full set of Cold Foil Legendaries from the set. In fact, I have a full set of legendaries. I also have a library too, which is which is really nice. And I'm gonna round it, round it all off with more more stuff, including a nice page of Guardian of the Shadow Realm. Actually, I had a lot more of these, but I uh, gave some away to patrons. A couple sad shadow puppetries, and I think there's only just a, a few more cards left. Nourishing Emptiness, Rouse the Ancients, and a sad spell fray cloak. These are very interesting cards because. You can only get these spell fray cards in the um, Monarch Blitz decks, which is actually very interesting. All right, we're gonna put those to the side. Now we're gonna get to the really spicy stuff. So this is, like here, shifting around. Ugh. This is a Game Genic Vault. This was given to me by a very nice friend. Um, I'm not sure if he wants me to say who it is. It's a content creator and um, He's just very nice and very cool, and I respect his work. But he gave this to me, and um, it was to solve a problem. And the problem was that, oh yeah, I did kind of shift it a little bit. They typically don't fall over. I was having trouble putting these magnetic cases into any of the other things that I have, right? And I was like, nothing is big enough. Nothing's tall enough to fit them. Well, this one is, the uh, Game Genic Vault perfectly fits these um, and these are as you can see here these are the magnetic cases i do believe this should also fit um graded slabs but don't don't quote me on that i'm not sure exactly the sizing so um this is my spicy stuff this i actually keep in a safe i uh, keep it in a wall safe because um once again i don't know the exact value of these but i know it is up there many digits <laughs> many digits so let's kind of just show it off this is this is my really nice stuff um stuff that i am actually not trying to replace but i'm trying to get unlimited versions so i don't have to play with my cold foil versions because once again i bought these got all of these when they were brand new and i played with all of these these were sitting in those binders that i showed you for a long time before prices spike so let's just show this off so this is a 
Cold foil, great library, opened up on the channel. A cold foil Fanville spring tunic. Um, this one I actually bought from a, I got it in a random booster box that I bought off of eBay for $70. Back in like maybe March of 2020, like right before Arcane Rising came out. Um, yeah, both Ian and Alan commented on it, um, who worked at Legend Story Studios, because I like, you know, messaged, I mean, like posted about it in the Facebook group and all this kind of stuff when I, when I pulled it. And they said my luck was out of control because I opened up a foil E-Strike in my other box. Um, I'm gonna just kind of go through these. So th this, um, by the way, this is my legendary section. We have legendary section, and then I do believe Cold Foil Commons, and then some, I don't remember if these are promo weapons or what, what these ones are, but uh, these are these are kind of sorted. So uh, this is my only fable that I have in here, though I do have that uh, Heart of Fiendo that I showed you that needs to go back in here. Um, so yeah, so we have um, Fiendo Spring Tunic. We have a Cold Foil Brave Forge Bracers. And at this point, I want to mention that I don't have a full Cold Foil set of every single set, though I do have a full legendary set of every card, except for Heart of Ice, but I plan on getting that very soon. Um, and this is where it breaks. We have the Mask of Momentum Rainbow Foil. We have a Rainbow Foil Tectonic Plating and a Rainbow Foil Scab Skin Leathers. These are the only three legendaries that I don't own a Cold Foil copy of, except for Heart of Ice once again. And that's because I was gonna buy these, um, but I was too late and the prices had already spiked by the time I got around to it. Basically, I had been building the other decks because Arcane Rising had just came out and I was just buying the legendaries to build decks to have deck techs on for the channel. And um, I lost, oh, it's so crushing. I was bidding on a Mask of Momentum on eBay and I think it ended up selling for like $98. And my max bid was like 90 six or something like that. I, I barely, barely didn't get it because I saw another one that had sold for like 90. So I was like, I don't want to go much higher. And um, I lost that on the cold foil. Oh, it's so heartbreaking. So heartbreaking. That's like a week before spike prices spiked and everything. Um, and same with the tectonic plating and the scab skin leathers. So maybe someday I'll, I'll try to trade for the alpha versions of these to try to just fill out the collection. But at this point, once again, I'm a player first and a collector second. Not an investor at all, so I don't really care how much these are worth. It's just it'd be nice to have the full set, just to say I have the full set. But that's the full Welcome to Wraith set. I do have the full Cold Foil set for Arcane Rising because, once again, this is the set that just came out and I was focused on building decks for these heroes. So I remember buying this skull cap, which is worth like, what, $4,000? A couple thousand dollars these days. I don't actually know. Um, but I remember buying it for 200 bucks um, because. I was like, I need it. It's, it's basically the tunic of the set. I'm gonna put it in a lot of decks. Um, and I, it was really hard for me to justify paying 200 bucks for this, by the way, um, because you know the channel was still fairly small and growing at the time. And I just was like, I just need it to build decks. So so that is a Arcanite Skullcap. Um, this Tecla Foundry Heart Cold Foil, I actually got in a trade from a guy named Emilio. I traded him my second um, Cold Foil Grasp of the Arcanite which I'll show you the first one as well. Let's grab some more of these. So here we have my Cold Foil Skullbone Crosswrap. I bought this um, in the same bunch that I bought the skull cap for. Um, I think I spent, it was like a hundred bucks or something for this. I think I got this all from either Midtown, Mer no, 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 no. Uh, Hobby Master? I bought it from a New Zealand store because they were the, some of the only people who had it back then. Uh, here's my Grasp of the Arc Knight, one of the two that I opened up on the channel. So one of the few Cold Full first editions I opened up on the channel. Um, opened up two of these things. And I remember specifically buying this uh, Storm Striders for 90 bucks um, as a part of the same bundle where I bought the uh, Cross Wrap and the um, Skull Cap. So yeah, just wanted to get all the legendaries to build decks. So now we have Monarch. All of these were opened up on the channel uh, or traded for. Uh, the, the ones that I traded for, I will mention. So open up two Carrion Husks. You can see a little bit of crud, crud here. That's just on the... That's just on this case. I should also mention, by the way, people always ask me, um, what are these cases and how, like, what are the, the things you put in there? So this is actually a really long team bag. So it's an extra long team bag. Uh, the case is a um, pro mold magnetic case. And then the cards inside, I know a lot of uh, investors are gonna not like this. They're actually in perfect fit sleeves. Um, 
I'm very, very careful with them. None of the corners are nicked or anything like that. Uh, I'm very, 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 very careful with my cards. Um, condition really matters to me. Not because of selling purposes. I just like having nice things. Um, but yes, perfect fit in a um, magnetic case in a team bag. And the reason I have them in these team bags, even though the team bags end up looking pretty ugly, um, is because it, otherwise you'll scratch up the cases. Just having these all sitting here like this scratch up the cases. Anyway, back on with the legendaries. We have a Vestige of Soul. I got uh, this one in a trade um, from someone from Thailand. I don't remember exactly where, but got that one in a trade. Uh, definitely opened up this Eclipse on camera. Uh, opened up this Doomsday on camera as well. So we have Cold Foil, Doomsday, and Eclipse. And then we also have the uh, Valiant Dynamo and the uh, Phantasmal Footsteps. I got both of these in a trade with Rob Seigel. Traded up some of my um, my extended arts. I didn't really care about the extended arts. I just wanted the cards to play with. And so I was missing these two. So that is my full set of Monarch Cold Foils. Um, I also have, I mean, legendary Cold Foils. I also have a Rainbow Foil, Phantasmal Footsteps. I've opened up two of these. I gave one away on the channel and I have, a, I have an extra one here. Okay, so now we have some other nice things. So this one is a... Cold Foil Snapdragon Scalers. I actually bought this from Travis from Pab Foundry. Um, I bought this one when it was a little more expensive. I paid like $100, I think, for this one. Um, and I also traded some stuff. It was like a big trade and, and buy thing. So these are my Alpha Cold Foils um, common. So we have a Snapdragon Scalers. We have a Bark Bone Strapping um, opened up on the channel. We have a Refraction Bolters also opened up on the channel. Uh, Mage Master Boots. Bought this from Travis from Fab Foundry. Once again, um, same part of the deal about the other ones. I just really wanted these boots. I, w I wanted the boots because once again, these are cards that I knew that I would play with over the years and I would regret not buying if I didn't buy them. So I was like, I need them. I need them. Same same reasoning why I bought the Pink Bitch um, E-Strikes. Exactly the same reason. Uh, this is a... Cold Foil Bullseye Bracers, open on the channel. Crown of Dichotomy, open on the channel. Achilles Accelerator, opened on the channel. We have a Talismatic Lens, opened on the channel. You're gonna see a common theme here. Okay, so these are some of the uh, Cold Foil um, Monarch commons that I have. The Aether Iron Weave in particular by Soyame is beautiful. This is not the last you'll see of Soyame stuff on the channel because I have something special coming from her, but because um, I'm a big fan of her art. But yeah, so these are interesting. They're only in these cases just because I played with them in either deck techs or on videos on the channel because all of the rest of the Monarch cold foils that I have, like this uh, blood drop, they're all just in these top loaders. So I have a bunch of other Monarch, uh, Monarch cold foils. Um, not quite a full set, but um, eh, most of them. I've got most of them here. Uh, that's just what happens when you open up that many packs, to be honest. I open up a lot of Monarch packs. And then we have a just regular Gambler's Gloves. It's just a first edition regular. It's not cold foil. Uh, I play this in decks and I was in here because I was just swapping it around. We have a bunch of uh, pre-release promos, cold foil pre-release promos, and then um, team, team Covenant promos. Um, once again, a lot of the cards that I showed you earlier, like these, a lot of these will eventually make their way in, into here. I've just been busy. I've been really busy. So that's this portion we still have a lot more cold foils to get through them so I'll, I'll be a lot quicker these are all um crucible of war cold foils so we have like reaping blade once again the it's the plastic on here that makes it look really bad the condition on the cards are really nice actually uh, we have a uh, double centauri sabers double mandible claws one lonely zephyr needle cold foil uh, a cold foil talishar autumn's edge and a cold foil plasma barrel um, I should also point out at this point, none of these cards are for sale. Uh, once again, I'm not an investor. Don't buy these to sell. Um, I'll maybe trade for things that I don't, you know, if I don't want something, I'll maybe trade it for something that I do want and I do want to play with. But most of the time, these are kind of not up for grabs. And if I do decide to sell them, I have a couple of friends who own stores and they are usually the, the people I go to first. Um, I'd rather deal with people I know who are trustworthy than just, just randos because I've, I've had some dealings with randos that 
I've, ne I've never had anything go like really bad, but I've had some people be very rude and impatient and um, I just don't appreciate it. Don't appreciate it. Um, so yes, let's go through some, let's go through the rest of the stuff. So the rest of the stuff I think is gonna be um, heroes and some other random cards, uh, including this first batch. So the first batch here, these are um, cold foil promos. And I do have a full set of the cold foil promos of the first two sets. So we have a Dawnblade, a Romping Club, a Nothos, a double Harmonized Kadachis. One of them is the promo, which is this one, this is the promo. And this one's from Crucible of War, but I keep them together because they're Kadachis. Um, so that is the, you know, uh, Welcome to Wraith. And then for Arcane Rising, we have promo Cold Foil Death Dealer, Crucible of Aetherweave, uh, Teclo, uh, Plasma Pistol, good old Neb Nebula Blade. And then, uh, so yeah, that, that's it for that. So those are all of the um, Cold Foil promo equipment. Those, the last time I checked, they were only worth like 40 bucks or something, but I do not care. Now we have our heroes. I do have a rainbow foil or cold foil version of every adult hero um, up to a certain point. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. So here we have uh, Welcome to Wraith. So this is a foil uh, Dorinthia, foil Bravo, foil Reinhar, and a foil Katsu. These ones were all given to me for pre-ordering, I think Arcane Rising? Not actually Welcome to Wraith. I think I got these for pre-ordering Arcane Rising. And then, this is a cold foil viscerai given to me by Legend Story Studios as a Christmas present. Um, to the like two people who are super cynical when I opened it and they're like, oh, that's just extra money for them. I still have it. Once again, I don't sell these things because I love this game. Why would I sell something that I would want to buy myself? Anyway, so that's the start of Arcane Rising. So we have viscerai here. And then we have a Rainbow Foil Kano, Rainbow Foil Dash, and a Rainbow Foil Azalea. So that is a full Rainbow Foil set of the first uh, first two sets of the game. Well, except for Viscerai. I have a Cold Foil instead of a Rainbow Foil. And then now we have some Crucible of War stuff. So, I'm just gonna grab a big chunk. This is a Rainbow Foil Ira, very short print. This is a first edition. It's another Rainbow Foil Ira, same, same kind of deal. Uh, this is a, these are all first edition, by the way. It's a first edition Rainbow Foil Kasai, first edition Rainbow Foil Cavdane, and a first edition Rainbow Foil Data Doll. Once I get Shiana in a thing, she will go there too. She's just a Rainbow Foil. Um, so yeah, that, that is my Crucible of War stuff. Put that over here. I'm missing a Benji and Ko. Benji and Ko for foils. And then these are just some random other foils that I like and that are cool. So we have a foil Might and Strike, not, not uh, this, this is unlimited, unlimited. Uh, foil Command and Conquer, also unlimited. Foil Command and Conquer, also unlimited. Man, it's hard to see the foil on this, but it is foil, trust me. And then a foil Art of War and a foil Art of War. So this just Art of Wars and Command and Conquers that have a foil that I like. I don't know if they're like big money these days, but once again, I don't care. Um, I have enough regular versions that you saw that I play with that I'm just gonna be, keep keep the, the, the foils nice. And then, once again, these will all get slabs or top loaders. Um, and by slabs, I mean the magnetic casing, top loaders, and then just go on in here eventually. Uh, and then I'll have to buy, <laughs> have to buy another one of these things. Um, but yeah, pretty nice. And this just kind of is like a magnetic case, mag magnetizes on. And this thing is, is quite heavy. So, if you're still watching this far, first of all, comment down below. Let me know what you think of this, um, this game genic, game genic uh, vault. But I guess I'll just show you my, show you my uh, play mats, and then we'll just call it a day. All right, so here are <laughs> the play mats. Let's just go over them quickly, and I'll just tell you where I got them. So uh, this one was at the Dallas Fort Worth Calling event. And I'm just gonna kind of pile these up over here. Um, also at the Dallas Fort Worth Calling event, I actually have two of these Fulminate mats. This one, this is not in any particular order, by the way. Uh, this one is actually given to me as a Christmas present from Legend Story Studios. Once again, shout out to the guy who thought I was gonna sell this immediately. So still have this, uh, one of my most cherished mats. 
Uh, this one was part of the Channel Fireball uh, Tales of Aria bundle. Um, Channel Mount Heroic, really, really like it. Beautiful map. Um, this one was part of the TCG Player Tales of Aria bundle. Also very cool. It's the alt art. It has the little, the little uh, fox dudes. This one is not an official Flesh and Blood map, though it is an uh, official Flesh and Blood character uh, and artist. So this is uh, Lexi done by Federico Muzetti. I got this one from Forge and Fire Gaming. It was kind of like a custom mat. It's actually um, stitched, but I, I include it in my Flesh and Blood mats. Uh, this one was um, from the Tales of Aria world premiere event in Vegas. This one was also from Las Vegas. I picked this one up at the Calling Las Vegas as part of the, the Calling package. Same with this one. Picked it up in the Calling um, in Vegas. Got a lot of play mats in Vegas. You go to the Calling events, you end up with a lot of mats. This one was given to me um, as part of the spoiler season for Monarch. So this was given to me by, by Legend Store Studios. Once again, one of my cherished mats. Shout out to the guy from this video who thought I was gonna immediately sell it. Oh look, it's still here, fancy that. Uh, this one was given to me by um, Legend Story Studios, part of the, the promo deal with the Herald of Protection. Um, haven't really used this one all that much, but I'll probably use it in the future. Really cool, really cool mat. Uh, this one I actually uh, bought. So I bought this one for 40 bucks. I bought this one for $40. Uh, I can tell this one's legit because one, um, and only, this art has not been released yet in high-res version, so there's no way to duplicate this other than by like scanning the mat, and it would look way uglier if you just scan the mat in. So yeah, I bought, I bought this one for like 40 bucks on eBay, like right when Crucible came out, or a little bit after it came out. Really cool mat, love this one, Coke's the promotion. Use it a lot. Uh, this one, I got a Channel Fireball, Channel Fireball bundle, it's just a 2020 um, classic style mat. And then this one is much harder to get, even though it looks the same. This one is a 2019 classic mat. This one was given to me by Legend Story Studios. Once again, I've had like four mats given to me straight by Legend Story Studios um, when I first started. Like right when Alpha came out, uh, right before Arcane Rising, they sent me this, all four of the hero decks, and a booster box. And they also sent me a Bravo playmat that I ended up um, Selling, I kind of regret selling that. That's the only playmat I've ever sold, which is kind of a bummer, but I still have this one, still have this one. So uh, I really like this one, even though it's the same as the other, 2019 really does it. And then last but not least, my newest playmat, though I did get this one at uh, the Calling Dallas. This is a um, one given to judges, like I mentioned earlier. Shout out to Tan and Grace for getting this for me. Once again, I'm not gonna be selling any of these things. So yeah, that was the video. Let me let me know, you know, down below what you think. Do you think I should do this every now and then? Maybe I'll update it every three sets or something like that and show how my collection has progressed. Um, yeah, my, my goal for every set basically, if, if you don't know this, I mentioned this a few times on the channel. My goal for every set is to get a complete play set, period. That's it, I want a play set. Um, it's nice to get the extra, you know, cold foils and that kind of stuff. I'd prefer to get cold foils if I can, but the, the, the goal at the end of the day is to get a full play set. I'm only missing four cards in the entire game, um, and they are Eye of Aphidia, Arc Knight Shard, um, um, the tree from Aria, um, Corsham, and then uh, the cold foil, uh, the uh, Heart of Ice. I'm gonna be getting the Heart of Ice soon. So I'm just missing three Fables, basically. I, I do plan to trade for them eventually, but thank you so much for watching. Thank you for you know taking the time to be here. If if you've been around this far, like if you if you're still watching this, the two people, the two people who are still watching this, let me know in the comments down below. We'll have like a secret code or something. Just tell me, hmm, tell me what your favorite playmat is that you own. Yeah, how about that? Tell me what your favorite playmat is that you own. Doesn't have to be flesh and blood, just your favorite playmat. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.